Last time we started talking about what makes a, a, a well-designed website, and you, um, your next assignment, your assignment does not do this week, but it does do next week, relates to doing some research online and coming a, across for some guidelines uh, about your website. Um, I, I like to talk about good web design by stressing, first of all, that what makes good web design is when the site is created that works towards satisfying the goals of two, two sets of goals. One is the goals of the organization that created the site, and one is the goals of the users that are visiting the site. It's important that it does both, right? I mean, a band could create a website that gave away all their music for free, and that would make the users very, very happy. But it might not necessarily, sat might not necessarily satisfy the goals of their user. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, of the organization itself. Maybe it would, right? Maybe by doing that, they're building up loyalty and something like that. So. The point is, is that you have to consider both the goals of the organization and the goals of the user. This doesn't mean that appearance isn't important. And there are some guidelines to, to, to make uh, your site look and act uh, good. But these are based on the usability of the site. Not necessarily looking at your site like it's a work of art. right? It's not like a picture that you're going to print out and hang on your refrigerator. It is making the site, using the appearance of the site, and using all the things that we're going to study in CSS, whether they be color, or border, or fonts, to make the site more usable. And that's what we're going to research, because we don't make, we, we don't put color on the website only to make it look nice. It will make it look nicer, all right? But we use color on the site to emphasize certain things, to draw the user's attention to certain things that are important, and so on. So, I like to talk about the goals first, and then we talk about like how we can make the appearance help serve those goals, all right, instead of the other way around, talking about the appearance first. Because everything we do about the appearance should make the goals easier to satisfy. Now, we're going to do... We're, your, your project is going to be done in two parts. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a design document. Now that design document uh, is going to be like a Word document, and it's going to contain four sections, and then there's going to be some HTML pages. That is the design, and that is due sometime in April. I don't remember the exact date, but it's online. You have the document online, Mike, for us I, to print off, or you're going to hand it out? You're going to make it. Okay. All right? You're going to make it according to what I'm going to describe today. Okay. So, it's due in April. You're going to create a Word document, and you're going to create a prototype, which is three pages of your site. Consider this to be a rough draft, just as you would do a paper in English, where you would turn in a rough draft before you turn in the final paper, you're going to do a rough draft, a design uh, for this first. Then there's going to be the final project, which you're going to turn in a completed website. takes the place of a final exam in this course. So there is no, there are no tests in this course. Um, you have your regular weekly assignments, you have your portfolio, which I'll talk about probably um, on Thursday, uh, and you have your project, which is two parts, the design and the final project. And we'll take a look at those documents in a minute here. All right. Um, 
And that's what your, your grade uh, is made up of. It's important to get this right. Because if you do the planning, then creating the project ought to be fairly easy. All right? It's the planning that the real work occurs uh, as far as your site goes. Let me mark in the people that did come. Who, who came in after I took attendance? Okay, can you give some names? Uh, Richard. Okay. Danny. Okay. Colette. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, let's look at what's online in Canvas, and then we'll talk about the documents, just to make sure. I hope you already read through these. If you have not, please take the opportunity to read through them as soon as you can. First thing I have is I have a project overview. I think we covered this one, where I talked about you could create six to eight web pages about uh, some topic. All right. This is a design document. This describes the document that you're going to create. we create this. You, before you start creating, you should have an idea, sort of a road map of what you're, what you're going to aim to create. That's important for a bunch of reasons. It's important, first of all, to get your thoughts down on paper. You may think you know what you're doing, and you may think you've thought through the problem completely, but um, it's not always the case. By putting your thoughts on paper, you can sort of guarantee that. Putting your thoughts on paper and documenting your design is important if you're working with a customer because you want to avoid any misunderstandings before you get too far along in the project. So after you've prepared the design document, you'll show it to your customer and it'll say, this is what we're going to make. All right? And the customer can read it and make sure that you didn't forget anything that was important or that there wasn't a misunderstanding between you and the customer. So it's important to document this. It's also important to document the design in the case of where you have multiple people working on the project, right? You want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So it's important to create a design document and to do the design work. There's five sections, and I'll talk about these sections, um, but I want to show you that, um, I want to show you in this document the five sections of the document you're going to create, and then we'll talk about them in more detail. There's going to be a strategy section. And that will contain a description of your site's topic and purpose. A three user personas. And I'll talk about what a user persona is in a minute here. A prioritized list of your goals for this project. By you, I mean you as the person that's creating the site. If you're pretending to be an organization, take the organization's perspective. Like if you're making a website for a sporting goods store, pretend you're the sporting goods store making this website and document what your goals would be for making a website like this. You have a prioritized list of the three user goals for each persona. So there'll be, there's goals for each persona. And again, we'll talk about what a persona is in a minute. And then finally, this should look professional. This should look like a completed professional document and not just, you know, lists that are thrown together. You know, it should, you know, use your word skills to make it look professional. It doesn't have to look, you know, like a magazine and be formatted elegantly. It just has to have some formatting so it's real easy to read. And again, it looks polished. It looks professional. Professional. At the end of each of these sections, I say what the requirements are. You're going to have a list in the scope section, you're going to have a list of requirements. A 
in other words, you're going to say what the website's going to have on it. If I was doing a website for a sporting goods store, I might say this, uh, the site will have a, uh, a section for sporting equipment, a section for um, sporting apparel, and a section for athletic shoes. Okay? That might be a requirement. And the shoes might say we'll have a separate page for the different types of shoes there are. You know, running shoes, basketball shoes, football, soccer, etc. So that's what I mean by requirement. A requirement is a short sentence that describes specific content that you're going to have on the site. So that's the second part. The third part is a structure chart. And a structure chart is sort of like an organizational chart for a business. You know, you probably have seen organizational charts where, you know, you have the president of the company at the top, and underneath them you might have a couple of vice presidents. Then underneath the vice president you might have some department managers. And then underneath that you have uh, different rankings of employees and so on down the line. Finally, there's going to be a wireframe. And a wireframe is sort of a rough sketch of what your page is going to look like. Keep in mind, I'm going to cover all of these in more detail in a minute here. I just want to overview and show you the different sections of it. Finally, you're going to have what is called a prototype. And a prototype is where you actually create HTML, CSS for three pages of your site. doesn't need to be complete, but think of it as like being a rough draft. That this is what my home page is going to look like. This is what this page is going to look like. This is what that page is going to look like. Okay? All right. So let's start at the top and talk about the strategy section. The nice thing about this design document is that the first four sections, the names, and I always use this to remember them, uh, but the first four sections start with the letter S. So there is a strategy section which relates to the goals of the project. There is a scope section which relates to the requirements. There is a see I wouldn't remember it if it didn't start with an S. Structure section, which shows what pages you're going to have and how organized. Finally, there is a skeleton. If you don't like the word skeleton, you could use the word sketch, which is a rough sketch of what the page is going to look like. And then finally, the fifth section is a prototype. If you notice, prototype starts with a P, doesn't start with an S. That's actually good, all right? Because the prototype is different from the other section. These are simply text and diagrams. This is an actual web page. So this stuff is in a Word document. This is actual web pages. So let's start off and let's talk about the, the strategy section and what you need to do for this. First of all, you're going to write a paragraph or two to summarize your site's purpose. And you want to be as specific as possible, all right? For example, um, it wouldn't be specific enough if you said, I'm going to make a site about basketball, right? What could different, you could have a bunch of different sites about basketball, each with different purposes. What might be a different purpose for, what might be one purpose if, if I was going to make a site about basketball? What might be one purpose of my site? 
compare team statistics for the 2017-2018 season? Yeah, to, to analyze the 2017-28 season. All right, to look at the teams, to make predictions about who's going to do well in the playoffs and who isn't, something like that. So one purpose might be to, to look at the current season and to document it and analyze it and give your opinion on that. What might be another example? Yes? Uh, explain the rules and stuff in the game. Explain the rules, maybe the history, maybe some information like for, like, you know, what the different positions are, uh, what the roles of each position is, and so on. That would be, you know, explain what a three-point play is, explain what, what fouls are, and, and that sort of thing. That would be a different purpose. What would a third purpose be? You could discuss uh, management decisions, uh, like player trades and why they occurred, stuff like that. Okay. Maybe a news site, all right, where you talk about the management decisions and trades and why they happened and give your opinion on them. What might be another example of a site that you have that you could make about basketball? Yeah, schedule, things like that. A couple things to keep in mind. All of these things, we could talk about pros. We could talk about college. We could talk about high school. We could talk about men's. We could talk about women's. We could talk about U.S. We could talk about international, right? Now, we could even do a site that helped, uh, helped teach someone how to play basketball. Gave some instructional videos, for example. This is how you dribble. Here is a good shooting drill. Here's a good dribbling drill. This is how you play defense. This is how you rebound with maybe some instructional videos or some examples. So to say I'm going to do a site about basketball doesn't tell me hardly anything. A better purpose would be I'm going to do a site about basketball that will analyze the 2017-2018 uh, 2017-2018 uh, NBA season for, for fans of the NBA. That might be a, a better, more specific statement. Or, I'm going to create a website that will help people learn how to play basketball. You know, and it's going to be focused mainly on kids. All right? Um, and so on. I'm going to do a, this year, this year is the Winter Olympics. All right? So, uh, you know, uh, if we substitute hockey for basketball, this year I'm going to do a website about the 2018 Olympic hockey medal uh, tournaments and, and games. All right? So that gets to be more specific about the purpose. So a site about basketball doesn't tell me anything if you go and then refine it to give a more specific purpose. All right? One thing that you should keep in mind is that you have like six to eight pages for this assignment, all right? Now, does that mean that you can't do more than eight pages? No. You can do as many pages as you like. You can do a million pages, right? But I doubt you want to, right? I understand how students work, all right? You don't want to necessarily spend all of your waking hours working on this project. You want to get this project done and, and have time to do other stuff in your life, other classes, have some fun, whatever. So, you want to narrow your topic down from something that's very broad to very uh, to, to more specific, something that you think you can cover in six to eight pages. All right? Um, that would be, uh, you know, so therefore you want to be as specific as possible uh, in doing this. If you go over six pages, fine. If you're much less than six pages, you should talk to me about it. Now, the thing to keep in mind is any project can be either too broad or too specific. Basketball might be too broad of a topic. So we found a way to narrow it down by talking about a particular aspect of basketball. You can also have the problem that the topic can be too specific. All right? I'm going to do a website about the three-point shot. I don't know. How many pages do you think you could write about the three-point shot? One. Maybe one, maybe a couple. You know, here's how you shoot a three-point shot. Here are some of the best three-point shooters throughout history. I don't know what more you could do about that. So almost any topic that you have can be either too narrow or too broad. 
the nice thing is, is that you can take a topic that's too narrow and expand it a little bit to get it to the right size, or you can take a topic that's too broad and narrow it down a bit. So if you're having problems with any of that, let me know, and I can work with you, and I can talk with you, and we can figure out a way to make your topic the right size. For example, if I wanted to do a, a, a website about the three-point shot, maybe I alter it to talk about, uh, to give a, tu a tutorial on shooting in basketball, all right? Where I have a page about the three-point shot, a page about free throws, a page about the jump shot, a page about the hook, a page about layouts, layups rather, and so on. And then I would be able to get the six to eight pages. All right. So that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to write a paragraph to summarize your purpose. Second thing you're going to do is define three user personas. All right. What is a user persona? A user persona is sort of a fictional profile of the kinds of people that you think are going to be visiting your site. All right? And I'll tell you why we do this. Sometimes in software development, we talk about the user that's visiting our site. We talk about them as though there's just one person or one kind of person that's visiting our site. Where in reality, any site attracts a bunch of different kinds of users. Think of the college website. Think of LC's website. What are some of the users, what are some of the kinds of users that are going to be visiting LC's website? High school students. High school students. students. What be another type of user? Us. Yeah, current students. Yes. Oh, professors. Professors. Uh, parents. Parents. Administrators. Administrators. Anyone else? Government uh, entities to like... Maybe. Maybe. Possibly, possibly a government entity would. Uh, I know, for example, um, we are um, we receive accreditation from an organization. It isn't really a government entity, but it's a, an accrediting agency. And they might visit our, visit our site. Um, companies within the area, they're looking for people to hire or people to train or or train their people to do something. Just members of the community that, you know, might want to come to Stocker Center to see a play or to see a movie or something like that might come and visit the site. So a college's website actually can attract a whole bunch of people. A whole, not a whole bunch of people, not just a whole bunch of people, but a bunch of different kinds of people. Just off the top of our heads, we came up with probably 10 or 12, right? A college website is a very big website. Ideally, that site ought to address the needs of each of those groups of people, all right? And that's difficult to do, right? Because it's difficult to sort of uh, keep it simple and yet address many people's needs. And again, that's a big goal of web design is to keep it simple while still accommodating the needs. And the people that are good at it are the people that make the successful web developers, all right? I do, I decide to do a website about uh, how to shoot a basketball. What might be some kinds of people that would be visiting the site? What are some personas that might be visiting the site? Yes? Someone learning how to shoot Yeah, someone learning how to shoot basket, uh, basketball. So a high school student that is trying out for the basketball team or wants to improve their skills. All right, or junior high, or whatever, any level, I suppose. All right? What might be another persona? Maybe professional basketball players that want to see, like, how your recommendations and tips stack up. And Possibly. It could be, there could be someone that is looking at my website uh, to evaluate it. That's a possibility. What might be another group of people that might visit it? Yes. A coach, exactly. Either a new or even a veteran coach, right? Maybe they have a, a student uh, or a, a player on their team that just can't shoot free throws for anything. And they may have tried to help the student shoot free throws, and it may not be successful. All right? So coach might say, 
I don't know what else to do. Let me go online and see if I can find some tutorials maybe that will help this, this player. So you have a player and you have a coach. What might be another persona? Well, a kid's parent, maybe, that's working with them to try to make the basketball team. Or you could say a beginner basketball player versus a uh, intermediate basketball player. So someone that has never played basketball at all versus someone that's played but isn't an expert. So almost any subject you can think of, there's going to be different groups of people that are going to be visiting the site. All right. What if I was doing a website for a band? Uh, not, not like a, a, a worldwide famous band, but just like a local band. What might, what might be the personas, the kinds of people that might be visiting their website? Friends and family of uh, right. band members. Friends and family of the band members. Or, you know, fans of the band. All right? Might be, might be visiting the site. And again, you could count those as two personas, because maybe... Um, they would have different needs. What would be another example of a persona? Go ahead. Like business owners that might want to hire them. Yeah, club owners that, that might want to hire the band. You know, you are, you know, you're looking for, you know, someone told you that such and such is a good band. You know, you should try to bring them in. So, well, you know, you're not going to go out and, and, and book them based on just someone's recommendation, you might want to go online and find out more about them. All right. Um, any other personas you can think of? Maybe someone that heard that this band is going to be somewhere. And, you know, gee, should I go see them or not? You know, my friend told me that such and such is a good band. Well, I don't know. They've been right before, but they've been wrong before. So I'm going to go online and check them out to see if they're any good. The idea is, is almost any purpose that you develop a site for, you're actually trying to satisfy the needs of multiple groups of people. And that's exactly what personas are. And here's what you do. All right? And this sounds a little goofy, but it's something that's useful. Is you identify these three personas and you actually make up three fictional people. That represent typical users. Now, I just picked the number three out because this is a smaller kind of project that you're going to be working on. It's not always three. It could be as many as it takes, right? If we were doing a website for a college, there would be dozens of personas. There probably would be 12, 15 different personas. So I picked three because you should be able to, for your project that you're doing, come up with three different personas. All right? If you can't, talk to me, and we'll figure it out. I have yet had a student have an idea for a project where between the two of us we couldn't think of three uh, personas. All right? You give them a name. You write a little bit of background about them, and you identify what their goals are related to this site. Now, you know, name, make it up. Use your friends. Use famous people and give them funny names. I don't know. Do whatever you want. All right? Just be sure to give credit to whoever owns the copyright of the images. All right? The background, you describe who they are. You know, um, let, me, let me come up with one. Let's say I'm doing a website about how to shoot a basketball.
Did I just turn it on or turn it off? Yeah, you turned it on. Okay, good. Here it goes. Okay, so this is my website about shooting basketball. So, description. This is the father of a young man that wants to be a good basketball player. All right. Name, we'll call him James LeBron. And here's a picture of them. All right. Uh, you could say son is in eighth grade. And is on his school's team, James wants to help son improve skills as he goes into high school. Reasonable persona, all right? This could be at any level, right? It could be a high school parent that wants to help their kid. Basically, it's going to be the same. So the goals might be to help son learn how to shoot shots that He himself doesn't know how to shoot. You could probably reword that a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know exactly. Uh, find drills to improve son's skills. And a third persona might be. Uh, help son learn to shoot with both hands. All right, that might be uh, three goals that this that this person has. All right. Notice a couple things about the goals. The goals are specific. All right. Not. Gee, I want to. Uh, I want to uh, have my son be a better basketball player. All right, that's not really terribly specific. I mentioned specific thing to give the father a chance to help the student learn things that the father himself doesn't know how to do, or you know, or, or doesn't have those skills. You know, maybe this guy did play a little bit of basketball, but uh, maybe he isn't an expert and doesn't know you know, how to shoot a hook shot, or was never good at shooting free throws, or whatever, all right? Uh, maybe, uh, because so much about skills in anything is like repeating exercises and drills, to find some drills at the student, some layup drills, or free throw uh, shooting drills, or something like that that the student can improve. And then finally, help the student learn how to shoot with both hands, you know, do right-handed layups, left-handed layups, that kind of thing, all right? Notice that none of these goals relate to the design of the site. One common mistake that I see a lot of students make when I ask them to define the goals is they say the goals are they want a site that has a clean navigation. 
that has a clear navigation. They want a site that it's easy to find what you're looking for. That really isn't a goal. That's expected. That's, it, that's more or less expected. That's basically just a web design principle, you know, that you're going you're gonna to have a site that, of course, you're going to try to make your site easy to find the information. That's simply an expectation of the site. That's simply just good web design. The goals ought to relate specifically to the content of the site. In other words, think of it this way. You could have the best navigation in the in history of the web. People aren't visiting your site to admire your navigation. This guy isn't going and, 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 and browsing the web to say, wow, look how good this navigation is. There's some great CSS, there's some great HTML, there's some great JavaScript, whatever. No. People come to your site for the content of the site. So that's what the goals ought to relate to. All right, that's what the goals ought to relate to. All right. Um, so keep that in mind when you're defining the goals. All right. Now, you're going to do this for three different kinds of people, for three personas. And so the next persona might be a basketball coach. And uh, maybe the goal for the basketball coach would be something like, find something to make the practices more interesting for the students. Uh, find assistance with, uh, you know, free throw shooting because that's the team's weakness or whatever. All right. But again, it's very specific, and it's about the content on the site. Do you just do this for the fun of it? No. You do this so that you start thinking beyond the user as just being one person. Truth be told, everyone visiting your site might have a little bit different goals, right? Everyone's just going to have a little bit different goals, you know? One coach that visits the site might be, might have a team that's weak at free throws. Another one might have uh, a weakness for uh, um, offensive rebounding and shooting or whatever. All right? But you can't go and develop a site for the 7 billion people in the world individually. So you break them down into categories and you try to solve those categories' needs. By breaking them down into categories of people or personas, all right, you're doing better than just thinking that one kind of person is going to visit your site. You're thinking of the different kinds of people that are going to visit your site, and you can be aware of their goals. All right, so it gives you a broader range of of things. Maybe another goal would be a parent that has never played basketball. You know, we could put that in a persona that this guy played some basketball, but not an expert. There might be another persona of a parent that played no basketball at all and wants to coach their daughter how to play. All right? So specific goals for each persona? Yeah, there, there, there will be specific goals for each persona, but they may overlap. Okay. All right? Keep in mind that the groups are related to each other, right? They might have some goals in common, but they may not have all the goals in common. A coach might, for example, have a goal of making their practices more interesting or making their practices more effective, or something like that. A parent of a kid, that's not one of their goals. They're going to have different goals, all right? So there's going to be some overlap, because it's not like they're totally different people, you know, or to they're looking at a totally different subject, all right? But they will have their own set of goals to find. Think about it about people that uh, are visiting the college's website. Um, High school students might want to look up to see what the programs are offered here at Loyne Community College to decide if they want to go here. Students that are currently students might want to do the same thing. 
right? Because maybe you're an undecided student. Maybe you don't know what you want to major in. So there might be some goals in common between different groups of people. But checking on your financial aid application, that might be something that a student would do, but a high school student that is not yet a student at the college would, wouldn't do, all right, because they're not a student yet. Okay, so in addition to this, in addition to the personas, the three personas that you have, and you will keep these personas in mind as you're doing the whole project. If you're thinking about things like, how am I going to divide the pages? How am I going to divide my website into different pages? You'll keep in mind, gee, what would help this person find the content they're looking for? What would help that person find the content that they were looking for? All right. For example, maybe on this website, uh, you would have um, information about different kinds of shooting in basketball. You might have a page especially for coaches. For coaches. You know, and that might be one of your main pages on your site. So if you're a coach, you know exactly what to go for to get examples of drills and things you can do to make your class or uh, uh, practices more interesting. You can even talk about the difference between, uh, uh, you can even make different personas of coaches of different levels, right? You know, if you think of, I don't know if you've ever seen like real little kids play basketball, uh, it's, it's kind of fun to watch, I hate to say it, because just how, how not really good they are. Uh, first of all, they're like a swarm of bees around the ball, right? They all get around the ball and they all kind of swarm and they just sort of like as a group migrate their way down one end and then someone throws up a shot, then they migrate their way down the other end and all that. Well, you're going to have practices for kids that small different than you're going to have practices for a high school team where the kids already kind of know what's going on. They just might need some refinement, all right? So again, that could be personas. And on your coach's page, you could have, here's some exercises if you're coaching uh, grade school, if you're coaching junior high, if you're coaching high school, all right? Uh, and so on. All right. You're also going to develop goals for the organization that's creating the site. Mike, real quick, do you yeah. want... Um, a specific number of goals for the uh, yeah. personas? Yeah, three. Three, okay, I thought so. I just made, uh, three again is a number that I just sort of picked because I think it's appropriate for the projects the size of that you're working on. In the real world, you wouldn't limit yourself to three goals. You would identify all the goals that you thought that the people would have, all right? So you wouldn't just limit it to three, all right? It's important to think of priorities, you know. Uh, what's important about a website often isn't just what you put in, but what you leave out, all right? Um, so if you think of like, gee, I could add this and this and this to the site. Well, if it's not really one of your main goals of you or one of your users, you might be better off leaving that off, all right? Because it will just get in the way and it will just clutter your site and make it more difficult for people to find anything on your site. You also come up with goals for your organizations in three. Maybe for example, and again this is where you have to use your imagination a little bit because you're making this site because it's an assignment and your goal is to get an A on the site, right? But that's not really what I want you to write down as a goal. The goals might be, number one, the person making the site, I could imagine, might be a high school coach. So maybe my goal is to give my players a resource. Maybe I want to promote my basketball camp. So yeah, maybe I'll make it this website to give my high school students uh, 
you know, some, some resources to stuff to work on on their own, all right? But maybe I run a summer basketball camp for junior high kids. And what better way to promote it than to have some material out there so parents could look at it and say, wow, this guy really knows what they're, what they're talking about, all right? And so maybe that's another goal of mine. So maybe I have videos on my site that say, this is how you shoot a jump shot, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. And by the way, parents, if you want uh, a one-week uh, uh, basketball camp for your uh, player, I have one every June from June 7th through June 14th. And have a link where they can sign up for it or get more information or whatever. Maybe I also want to get invited for motivational speaking jobs or to run a basketball seminar somewhere else. Yeah, I run my camp, but, you know, hey, your team have some problems? I can come in for a special weekend seminar that will straighten them out or whatever. Or, by the way, I also give motivational speeches to groups. So if you're interested in that, contact me. All right? That's what you do in the strategy section. That's the first section of it. This gives you a roadmap of what it is that you're trying to solve and what problem that you're trying to solve. Yes? Is it bad for the goals of the organization to be like related to the goals of the personas? Does that make sense? Like you want them, like you want your users to be able to have this resource or like, like something like that? Uh, it, it is absolutely not bad. Again, it's almost like the relationship between the goals of the personas. There, there probably should be some overlap. Because if there is no overlap at all, the site probably won't be successful. If your users are looking for things that are way different than what your goals are, it's going to be hard, right? And if you think about it in this sense, maybe if you're trying to recruit people to get to your, your basketball camp, that might be one of your goals. Well, you kind of have to give them things to motivate them to go to your site in the first place. Right? And what better way to get that is to give some training videos on the site. All right? This is a strategy section. This is a section I spend the most time talking about because I think it is, um, I don't want to say the most difficult or the most important, but I think it's a, it's, it's a, a section that students, um, uh, that it's more abstract and it's more conceptual than the other ones. The other sections will go by quicker. We'll cover the rest of the other sections on Thursday, I'm sure. Most of all the other, the other four sections on Thursday. All right. So we'll leave this here. Keep this in mind. Remember, strategy is about goals. You define the goals because serving the goals is really what makes a website good. All right, providing the information that, that the users are looking for and serving the goals of your organization. Next time we'll start talking about the scope. And the scope relates to how we're going to go about satisfying those goals. All right, we'll see you in lab. Yeah, there's a lab due every week, Joe. There, there's something due every week. I'm going to go and unlock the door, then I'm going to come back to get my video files. Do you have another lab that you opened up that's due this week, Blake?